This is the solution to quiz number two for ECE 321. On the first problem, we're trying to design an instrumentation amplifier to convert a temperature to a voltage going from minus 10 volts to plus 10 volts as temperature goes from minus 10 C to plus 10 C. The first step is to find the range of resistance. The resistor goes from 5719 ohms to 2002 ohms as temperature goes from minus 10 to plus 10. To convert that to a voltage, use the voltage divider. Uh, that'll be right here. Now let's calculate the voltage x. x will be by voltage division R1 over R1 plus R2 times 10 volts. So that gives you the voltage goes from 6.5 volts to 4 volts. As voltage goes down, output goes up, so connect to the minus input. The gain that you need is change in output over change in input. Output changes by 20 volts as the input changes by 2 volts, so we need a gain of minus 7.8. The minus sign is taken into account by connecting the minus input. So pick the resistor to be 7.8 to 1. And the offset. I want the output to be 0 at mid-band. That's the average between these two. So the offset will be the average of the two voltages, 5.28 volts. That gives you this circuit. A gain of 7.8, offset of 5.28, going to the minus input. So Y will go from minus 10 volts to plus 10 volts as temperature goes from minus 10 C to plus 10 C. On problem number two, you are to take that output and convert that to a curve fit, a parabolic curve fit. You know the answer is going to be roughly Y equals X um, because they go from minus 10 to plus 10. If I do a parabolic curve fit and MATLAB will go from minus 10 to plus 10 Celsius, find the resistance, find the voltage, find the output, uh, now do your least squares curve fit. I wind up that y is almost x. That's kind of what I expect. It's a little bit different. There's a little bit of bend to the curve. That's taken up in, or accounted for in the parabolic term. If I plot the outputs, here's what it looks like. The two look almost alike. The mean error is zero. That comes from having a constant term on my curve fit. The standard deviation is 0.03. So it's roughly a measure of how much the error is. Typically about two standard deviations is your error. This will be good to about 0 0.06 degrees Celsius. Problem three. If I have a beam that's being deflected by 20 millimeters, you form a circle. This is a big arc with a radius of R. The, in right here, I have a right triangle. The radius is R. To the midpoint is R minus 20. And here is 180 or 190 millimeters. So from right triangle, I know the R squared hypotenuse is R minus 20 squared plus 190 squared. Solve for R. And you get 912.5 millimeters. That's to the center line. The outside edge will be 1.5 millimeters longer, or 914 millimeters. The strain on the outer edge is the new length minus the equilibrium length, divided by the equilibrium length. Essentially, the difference for the thickness, half the thickness, 1.5 millimeters over 912, gives a strain of 0 0.0016. Connect a strain gauge to the outer edge, and that resistance is going to go from 120 ohms to 120.4 ohms. Not a lot, but if you have an instrumentation amplifier, you can amplify that to convert that to 0 to 10 volts, which wasn't asked for, but you could. Problem four is if I have a filter, what this means is cross multiply. S means derivative, so this is actually a third order differential equation, is what that filter represents. And that's the differential equation relating x and y. If you have two inputs, use superposition. If the input is 5, this is the gain everywhere. All I care about is what's the gain of dc at s equals 0 times the input. The phase representation of 5 is just 5. Multiply that get 8.33. So the output at dc is 8.33. Uh, repeat for the input of 6 sine of 70. Here the frequency s is the term right here, s is j7. x is 0 minus j6, real is cosine minus j is sine. Since this is 6 sine of 70, x is 0 minus j6. Output is the gain times input. This is the gain everywhere. All I care about is what's the gain at j7 times the input. I get a complex number. Real part means cosine minus j means sine. So there's the output at 7 radians per second. The total answer then will be the sum of the two. Problem number five, I'm trying to build a filter to meet this characteristic. And the trick here is to create a cost function where the minimum is 
when I meet the desired frequency response. So I'm going to guess Z. Z, I'll parse and get the parameters A through F. And this is what they mean. Um, I'm saying frequencies between 0 and 10 readings per second. What the gain should be is 0 0.6 for frequencies less than 3, and 1 for frequencies between 3 and 6. Compare the two, take the difference, return the sum squared error. That's my cost function. And you can check on that. I could sit there and say, here's the filter, A, B, C, D, E, F, or just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. How good is the filter? And that's my filter right there at the green line. Uh, let's crank up the DC gain so you can kind of see it. It's kind of guess, guess again, guess again, until the two filters match. Or I can let MATLAB guess for you. If you give it a random initial guess, MATLAB will do its best. Uh, in this case, it can't find the answer. It typically helps with the uh, optimization schemes if you can come up with an answer that's close and let MATLAB iterate. So the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are kind of nonsense. It would work a little bit better if I had a pull at DC, say at minus 1. Stick a second pull uh, maybe right here at minus 1 plus J2, and a third pull at minus 1 plus J5, trying to pass these guys. So here MATLAB's going to kick out saying I can't do it. We'll control C and stop it. So instead, let's put the first pole at minus 1. That's S plus 1. Uh, poles at minus 1 plus minus J2 would be S squared plus 2S plus 5. Poles at minus 1 plus or minus J5 would be S squared plus 2S plus 26. And let's make the DZ gain 0.6, which would be 0.6 times 1 times 5 times 26. So there's my first guess, the green line. It's now going to take that, move the poles around, and see if I can come up with a better approximation for my curve. And kind of notice, getting better. It helps with optimization if you give it a reasonable first guess, not just something completely arbitrary. So here MATLAB is trying, trying, trying. and eventually comes up with an answer. Uh, the answer I got went up to the sum squared error of 1.24, and here's the parameters. And that's what the gain looks like versus frequency. Problem number six is then to design a filter to implement this transfer function. And here to split this up into two parts, here I've got a poles at minus 1, actually minus 2, plus or minus j, 3.13. And this has poles at minus 1, plus or minus j, 5.38. To find the terms, I'll take the first pole. Uh, the angle of poles is 58 degrees, or amplitude of the pole is 3.87. 1 over RC is the amplitude. So 1 over RC is 3.87, C is 2.5 microfarads. Over here, the amplitude is 5.4. Whatever RC is 5.47. And it didn't do that right. Uh, 1.85 microfarads. That's a little bit off. I should take the amplitude. To get the angle, this has an angle of 58 degrees. The angle comes from 3 minus k is 2 times the cosine of the angle. One again, 1.96. For this amplifier, the gain is 1 plus the ratio, or 1 over 100k. So we get 1.96, and let R1 be 96k. For the second one, I want the gain to be 2.63. So R1 is 1.6 or 163k. So there's your circuit. And then the DC gain is going to be 1.96 times 2.63 gives you 5.18. That's quiz number two for ECE 321.